All right, so let's check out what we're gonna do and then uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, one, two, three, and. Welcome to Uke Like the Pros and our daily lesson today. I'm Terry Carter. We got a special, not only lesson today, but it's a very special day. Where's it? Am I at the right shoulder? It's one of my best friends, brothers in the entire world. Birthday today. He's out in Kentucky. So Jason, happy birthday. I love you. We've known each other since we were uh, in middle school. So. It's awesome having a lifelong friend and also other group of friends that we still stay in contact with on a daily basis. So that's awesome and makes me feel special. And, uh, and then we have a very cool lesson today as part of our ultimate chord progressions for ukulele. This one is lesson 5B. And we've done this lesson before, but we've done it in a different key. So we did it in the key of A minor before, but now we're doing it in the key of D minor. And so this is your Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You by Led Zeppelin or While My Guitar Gently Weaves by George Harrison progression, but now transposed instead of A minor, which is a great key for guitar, and it's okay on ukulele, but now to more of a D minor sound, and what I like about it we have that descending bass pattern. Now, some of you know I have a premium course on all these 23 ultimate chord progressions, so if you want to jump to that, you grab all the premium lessons, Video, high quality video, audio. You also get to download the Fast and Slow backing track sheet music and all the rest of that stuff. And that's all available on ukulelethepros.com. And I'm, that course is only about a week old and it's something that I'm very proud of. So if you want to uh, jump all those and grab those and you have them, then uh, it's just a one-time payment. So check those out. All right, without further ado, let's jump into our lesson today. So we're gonna start with a D minor chord. And this is a bar chord, and it can be a little tricky if you're not used to bar chords. Now, disclaimer, for this particular lesson, I do have a low G on my fourth string. And what that allows me to do is get that bass note. If you don't have a low G and you have a high G, yours is gonna sound more like this. Right, that's just an octave higher than. But the good news is you don't have to change your chord shape. So whether you're playing a high G or low G, you're playing the same shape that I'm showing you here. So D minor, and so we're just barring here strings one, two, and three at the fifth fret. And then my third finger is on the fourth string, seventh fret. So there's our D minor. You wanna make sure that bar is not off to the side that your finger is actually parallel with the fret and not off to the side so you get that nice clean sound on each particular string. Now let's jump, let's jump before I show you the rest of the chords let's jump into the rhythm here so our first rhythm and this is oh, that's the wrong wrong one this one the rhythm was right it's just the wrong chord but this rhythm is going to stay consistent for the entire song. 
And so what we're doing here is eighth note on beat one, so down, eighth note, up, down, up. So beats one and two all eighth notes, so down, up, down, up. And then on beat three, we got a quarter note, so that's just a down stroke. And then on beat four, we have another quarter note down stroke. And so that rhythm is gonna go down, up, down, up, down, down. Or if I'm counting one, If you notice, I'm using my first finger here, and where I like to strum is right where the body of the, and the neck of the ukulele meet. Now, I see a lot of people like to strum back here too, right over the sound hole, which is fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I've seen some of the best players in the world do it there. Guitar, that's a very guitaristic thing to do too. Actually, guitar players like to strum. The reason why I like to do it here is because I just feel like sounds a little warmer there than back here. It's a little thinner sounding, but they both work. Don't forget, we are live, and so drop in, say hi, leave a comment, and if you're not watching this live, still leave a comment because, as you know, I check these throughout the day and love to hear from all the U Collective Pro members from, well, I'm happy to say, not across the U.S., not just Canada, but really all over the world. It's really cool to have so many friends uh, be here with me all over the world. So that's, that's truly a blessing. All right, so we gotta measure the D minor. Let's do that together. Three and one and two and three, four. Now we go up to the next chord here and we jump to a F slash C. And if you notice, when I change also, the rhythm's the same, except it's just got a new chord. So this chord is a unique kind of chord. This is our an F chord, but normally we see an F chord here, just our open position cowboy chord. But our F chord here, and so the way I finger it, my fingering is a little different than maybe a lot of yours, but my first finger here is on the first string third fret. Then I take my second finger, my middle finger, and I bar it over strings four and three at the fifth fret. And then I add my third finger on the second string, fifth fret. And so that's how I finger this particular F. Now, this is actually not technically an F, if you want to talk theory, this is actually an F slash C chord. Why? What does a slash C chord mean? Well, it means F slash and then a different bass note. So normally when you play an F chord, you should have an F in the bass. But this one, instead of having an F, it has this note, whatever this note is. And that happens to be a C. Now, yeah, I don't want to even get into that. So four string here at the fifth fret is a C note, so F slash C. Gets a little tricky when you have a high G here, because then technically that's not a bass note. Your bass note would be on the third string, but eh, let's not worry about it. Just, just go with what I'm saying for now. It actually works for this progression. Okay, so F slash C, and you notice the rhythms is exactly the same, so still down, up, down, up, down, down. So just like the D minor. Okay, so let's just do that because I think getting to this F is a slightly tricks, tricky thing to do. So if I bring this up, and I'll take that away, let's just do the first two measures here. So D minor and F slash C. One, two, three. So we got D minor. And then right to F slash C. All right, now I got another fairly tricky chord for you. Where is it? It's right there. G slash B, and we get another one of these slash chords. So we know what this means. It means a G chord, that, and then slash meaning what's in the bass, or what's the lowest note we play. Now in this case, I'm playing a B note. So what I'm doing is barring strings one, two, and three at the second fret, and then I'm adding my second finger to the second string third fret. So this is just basically our G shape, but I have to bar it because now I have to grab my third finger and grab it up here on the fourth string fourth fret. And that's a kind of an awkward fingering if you haven't seen this particular chord before. But this is a G slash B because it's a G chord and then I'm adding a B in the bass. G slash B. And that also gets the same rhythm as before, and I'll just bring that one up just by itself. So you would be looking at just this rhythm, just for that chord. Two, three, four, so it's down, up, down, up, down, down. 
All right, so let's do those first three measures now. D minor, F slash C, and G slash B. One, two, three, and so we got D minor, F slash C, Now, if you might have noticed, I put the quarter notes on beats three and four, especially on beat four, to give you that one extra half of a beat to get to the next chord. And so I figured we could all use just that little extra time to do that. I'm going to check in real quick. I'm going to see who's here with me today. As you can tell, I am still in Los Angeles. And I have one more day tomorrow, and then I get to go back home. So excited about that. <laughs> And as you know, I'm right in between my, uh, my classes right now. And the internet is usually very fast here, but it's slow, so I'm going to let that load. I'll show you the last chords, and then I'll get back to that. So here we are moving forward now. And our next chord here is the B flat chord. Now check out this measure, though. When we get to this measure, we don't have just one chord. We have two chords. We have the B flat chord. <laughs> And this one may not be all that new to you, but let's go over it anyways. Barring strings one and two at the first fret. Second finger on the third string, second fret. Get them nice and clean. And third finger on the fourth string, third fret. So B flat. But you notice if you look at the rhythm, it's just going to be two beats. So it's just going to get down, up, down, up. But then on beat three, we got to switch to the A chord. Okay, so again, B flat's gonna go down, up, down, up. And then for beats three and four, we gotta go A chord. All right, and so the A chord is actually probably the easiest chord of the bunch here because it's our traditional cowboy chord A, meaning open position A. So second finger on the fourth string, second fret. First finger on the first fret of the third string. And then open second string, open first string. And that just gets beat three and four, so three, four. So if I play this measure that's written on the screen, it's just B flat and then A, A. Again, three, four, B flat, one and two and three, four. All right, now let's do the entire, nope, not that, I want this right there. All right, so let's play this whole thing now. We don't need this chord. Let's play the whole thing nice and slow, okay? So going back to the D minor, two, three, four. So we got D minor, one, and now F slash C, G slash B, B flat, and then A, and then it repeats again. So D minor, what a cool progression. We got a few more things to talk about. I think my uh, screen updated here, so let me check in. It kind of did not really, actually. So let me try Chrome, see if Chrome is working any better. I don't know what it is. Sometimes Safari works, sometimes Chrome works. It's technology, so it's the way it goes today. So is this one working? Yeah, I don't know. Let's see, there it is. Okay, that one popped up. Hey, I'm live. Okay, there we go, cool. All right. So now, let's go ahead and try this whole progression now, but with the slow backing track. All right, so let me close that out, and here we go. If you're mentioning me, it's not showing up. Things are a little weird, so I'll have to check at the end and, or later. So here's the slow backing track. Everything you see on the screen. One, two, three, four. So it's... backing track, G slash B, really lock in, one more time and check out how I'm going to play this.
Now, what I was pointing out, which is not written in the music, it could be, but I didn't, is that on beats three and four, notice what I'm doing. I'm playing beats three, four, I'm doing a couple things. One, I'm playing them short. So instead of playing them full length quarter notes, one and two, which is the way it's written in the music, I'm doing this. I'm playing them short. So I'm actually playing them staccato. And so they should, if I play them that way, have a dot right over the note head. And so what I'm doing there is, to play the note staccato, I'm hitting it on B3, and then I'm just simply releasing the pressure from the ukulele to stop the sound. It's hard to see, because you can't see my hand. It's not actually coming off, it's just releasing the pressure. And you notice, that just stops the sound. And I do that on beat four also, so three, four. And that gives me that nice crisp short. Da, 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 ba, ba. The other thing I'm doing is I'm, I can accent, I don't know if I do it every time, but I can accent those beats three and four just a little bit. Just by hitting a little bit harder on my strum. Right, so just a little bit harder accenting. So staccato and accent, you don't have to do it, but that's just a nice little touch that gives the music just a little bit more life. Now, so if I do that, D minor, staccato, F slash C, G slash B, now B flat, now A. Now here's something unusual. Because we're playing an A chord, remember that has two open strings, the second and the first, I can't just simply release the pressure off my hand because I'll still have those two strings ringing out. So even though I release my pressure, you're still hearing that ring out. So what I have to do is one and two and three. With my third and fourth finger, I just have to dampen the strings. So one, so three, four. Yeah, and that's how it gets a staccato on an open chord. So if I play that last measure B flat to A, it's gonna go one and two and three, four. And that's all I'm doing. Okay. So let's go ahead now and try it. We're gonna play the total of four times with the, the fast backing track this time. Here we go. One, two, three, and. show you that one last thing and then we'll get on out of here. So all I'm doing, I don't have diagrams for this so I'm just going to have to show you D minor. And then when I play my F, if I just release my third finger and I'm barring strings 1, 2, 3, and 4 at the 5th fret, I'm going to add my pinky to the 1st string, 8th fret. So that's your a new F chord, F slash C, still F slash C except it's a different voicing. Instead of my melody note being here on the 1st string 3rd fret, it's 1st string 8th fret. It's kind of nice when you're going. Kind of sounds cool. Then for the G, instead of going back here, I'm just going to take this F shape and slide it up two frets now to the seventh fret, barring the seventh fret with my pinky now on the tenth fret. Then I'm going to take this shape all the way up to the twelfth, nope, tenth fret. That's B flat, so barring the tenth fret. Pinky all the way up here on the thirteenth fret slide it back one fret to the A, 
So now I'm barring the ninth fret and my first finger's on the 12th fret. So it's D minor. Now F on the fifth fret. Now slide it up two frets to G. Now slide it up two frets to B flat and back one fret to A. So that's all I was doing. This gives you slightly different voicings and that one. Okay, uh, let me see if I can get on. I don't think I can. It seems to be acting a little weird, but I'll do one little fast check. Uh, oh, it loaded. What do you know? Let's see if if I can see. Oh, it didn't load. All right. Well, no, it did. It's, it's acting weird. All right, so I see a few people with us today. I don't see any comments, so those might be delayed. So I will check those later. But anyway, thank you for being here. Again, happy birthday to my brother, Jason. And as always, we'll see you in the next lesson.